with me is Molly Breen of, is it Perigee or Perigee? Perigee. 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 Okay, exactly. perfect. CEO and founder. Molly, will you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your background? Yeah, absolutely. So before founding Perigee, um, I was at the NSA, the National Security Agency. I was a mathematician at the NSA turned hacker. Um, and I was working on IoT and OT devices. Yep. What I mean when I say that, think HVAC systems, security cameras, sure. anything or everything that is getting connected in the sure. world. Um, and looking at these from the offensive side of the house and then Perigee today is looking at this from the defensive side of the house and selling into enterprises. Got it, got it. So, I mean, tell me a little bit more about what that's actually like being a mathematician for the NSA. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, um, one of the things that, I, that comes to mind when I think about being a mathematician at the NSA, maybe a little known fact, maybe a fact that everyone knows, is NSA hires the most mathematicians, I believe, in the entire world, at least in the, in the entire US. So one of the coolest things about being a mathematician at the NSA was you weren't alone in, in your sure. interests and, and in your curiosity and in having a lot of other smart people around you. The, the lane that I found that I really enjoyed at the NSA was working at the intersection of math and computer programming, software cool. engineering. Um, there is a world at the NSA where you can be up against a whiteboard and thinking about problems that have a 10-year horizon. I really enjoyed working on the math problems that had a shorter time horizon, sure. was getting deep into code, thinking about how you get to results more quickly using software. Hmm. Um, and that, that was what I really enjoyed. I think the other thing that I was say about being a mathematician at the NSA is there's a lot of introverts and sure. I am a little bit more extroverted which is one of the reasons why I found myself over on the offensive side of the agency because that was where the nerf guns were that's where the, <laughs> okay. the um, people going out after work were and I really enjoyed that yeah. cultural aspect just as much as I enjoyed the work when I was working there okay and so like you mentioned right there's this kind of two-pronged piece one you enjoyed the shorter term math challenges which yes. I have to imagine in general are probably more rooted in like modern technology as opposed to like theoretical. Yes. Largely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then there's the culture piece that you touched on yeah. as well. How did you end up in security in particular, right? And what did that transition actually look like for you in practice? Interesting. So your question is along the lines of how did you end up in security? And I think it is right. a great question because today Perigee is a cybersecurity company. Right. Um, when I was joining the NSA, I didn't know that I was joining a field that would eventually characterize me or position me for cyber. I sure. thought I was joining a mission that is very important, that can impact a lot of people, make a big sure. difference in the world. Um, it wasn't until I started started at the NSA, they have this internal incubator where you can bring an idea that you see from the agency hmm. and work on it internally. And it's a lot like the startup model where right. you prove it out, you get funding from external stakeholders and from different departments, you bring on a team that's cross-disciplinary across hmm. departments. And it's then that I learned the word entrepreneurship and learned <laughs> okay. what a startup was, um, learned things like the lean startup model, and I think yep. it's then that I also came to realize, oh, all these skills that I'm building here, how they are characterized to the real world, which is sure. what we would all call it, sure, sure. is cybersecurity. And I started to think about what does that unlock then around the pain points and the problems that are happening big, more broadly in the cybersecurity landscape. Hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting. I never knew about that incubation kind of hub within the NSA. And I mean, the approach that you just described sounds a little bit like Google even, right? Yes. Where you have like these new ventures that spin up within the company. They encourage you to go pursue it. They give you the resources to, to succeed within that as well. I'm curious, and maybe you know the answer to this, maybe you don't. Are there any like very well-known companies that have come out of that incubation hub? Interesting. Uh, other than Perigee, which of course, is growing. Of course. Which uh, everyone listening will have heard everyone of Everyone will, listening will have heard of after <laughs> this. Exactly. Uh, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. I, okay. I believe when I think about that incubator and what it was positioned and designed to do yeah. was um, keep ideas uh, inside the agency, for lack of a better term. Okay, sure. uh, I believe it was a way of bringing innovation to different departments and giving a vehicle and a path forward for folks that had ideas 
and could think about how to improve them internally. So the, the sure. focus was less on spinning them out. And I think that that's in part because of, unlike a Google, the problems that we work on at NSA are very secretive. <laughs> right. uh, and it's it's not always obvious what the one-to-one -one correlation would be to a, to a private sector. So sure. in this scenario, I don't think that there's been any companies that have come out of it. Uh, I would be curious to know what the number of entre entrepreneurs that went through that who have now just gone on and started companies, sure. even if there wasn't, if it wasn't the same idea. Like the sure. uh, the idea that I did in that incubator is slightly different than the one I'm doing with Perigee. Okay, that's uh, what I was about to ask you, right? Yeah. Because you just said, hey, it's designed to keep people in this innovation within the NSA. Here you are, obviously outside of the NSA. Yeah. I have to imagine as we talk about IoT, the kind of use cases yeah. within the NSA are probably slightly different than you're doing with Perigee. But what did that actually look like? kind of building in there and then breaking out to yeah. Perigee outside. One of the biggest things that I was conscious of when I had all these ideas around starting companies, was seeing all these pain points from the offensive perspective, was making sure that it really matched to end users um, in the private sector sure. and matched to dollars and budgets and all the things that you really have to be conscious of when you're building a company that sure. is going to be scalable and be able to reach a bigger market. And um, so that process was a lot of knowing it from one perspective, but then doing a lot of customer research. Customer discovery is the, the fancy lean startup term. Super to fancy. really understand, okay, CISO, um, you've got IoT. What are the top three things that you're worried about? Security is one angle of, wh of what you're looking at. Sure. You're also worried about the volume of work that your team has to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes that's stopping a threat. Sometimes that's just patching a device. And how do you, sure. and how do you make sure that your, your platform that you're building maps into those priorities just as much as it maps into the landscape of the broader cybersecurity ecosystem. Sure. So basically understanding what it is in the private market that was really yes. driving these prospective buyers, these CISOs that were dealing with the challenges of IoT, and then adapting the work that you've done in this space to say, okay, how can we go ahead and address these very tangible problems? Yes, exactly. Okay. And that's, that's the path that we took. I think that there are companies that may not always do that mapping. And <laughs> you sure. might find that they have a really amazing technical product. It does something really well. Sure. Um, I, I, I'd be willing to bet that it has a harder time getting broad applicability without having really understood what is the value that you're bringing to the customer beyond right. just an awesome technical solution that could stop a threat that you were seeing from inside the agency walls. Sure. So you did all of this customer discovery. You yeah. got to the heart of, OK, what are CISOs actually dealing with mm. when it comes to IoT challenges? What did you decide on for Perigee in mm. terms of actually addressing these? What does it look like? Yeah. So, to, so if we go back to the thing, the reoccurring theme that we heard so often that was especially true with IoT and OT devices, and when I say OT, I'm saying operational technology, we group those two things together, IoT and OT, to essentially mean anything that is connected in a B2B setting. Just sure. that is not your traditional IT servers and hardware and, and routers and switches and laptops. That's IT. We're in the other the other side of the world looking sure. at all of the little devices that might not have that general computing power. The thing that we kept coming back to and hearing over and over again was how they all needed to maximize security across all of these devices, but they really needed to be able to do them in a way that minimized the disruption that they were having on the business. Because when you think about IoT and OT, it sits at that intersection between what is critical to the network, but also what is making what is making and driving revenue for the business. You sure. think about a manufacturing company, and if their systems go down, they're not able to produce product, and right. they're not able to sell SKUs, and that becomes so important. And when you talk about IoT and OT, you really have to take into account both sides of the business. Sure. And at the end of the day, you're looking at that through the lens of the fact that this is now bridging different types of stakeholders, because you've got the security Definitely. folks that are <laughs> securing them, but you've got all the operations folks in a manufacturing floor that are running them. So Perigee today is really not just solving that that one-to-one -one narrow security problem that is, oh, let's stop this threat, let's stop this, this threat. It's a holistic, complete platform for IoT and OT that is a comprehensive set of security tools coupled with workflows and dashboards that exactly match use cases within an enterprise and is bringing the stakeholders together from the security side of the house, mm -hmm. the 
operations side of the house. So in a platform, in a, in a customer's environment today, you'll find anybody from security who is building workflows and owning security practices, but being able to delegate and interface with physical security, facilities, maintenance and operations, all sure. of these folks that touch IoT and OT on an everyday basis. Got it. So essentially, if I'm hearing that right, kind of an all-in-one platform for risk management, vulnerability management, threat detection, instant response, et cetera, when it comes to IoT, OT devices? Yes, with the, uh, with the awareness that when it comes to I, I, IoT and OT, it's living at that intersection between security and operations. Definitely. Meaning um, more and more security teams have to rely on operational teams to Definitely. help with the context. Is this a device in, if we're in a hospital, is it a device in the physician's lounge or is this a device in the ICU? If we're talking about a thermostat, that has two very different risk profiles. Definitely. And so, yes, it's an all-in-one platform, but not security for security's sake. And sure. um, But really thinking about how do you integrate these different types of stakeholders and workflows so that it's both improving security outcomes, but also improving the productivity amongst these teams and their ability sure. to collaborate. So what's the core input into the platform as far as like identifying some of these different security issues that need to be resolved? Is that something where... Perigee has its own scanning that it's doing on some of these devices? Are you integrating with other third parties? What does that look Absolutely. like? Absolutely. There are three different inputs that we bring okay. into our platform. Sure. It is, we have a network monitoring software that lives inside of the network. It is passively monitoring all the devices. It's picking hmm. up on who do they typically talk to? How often do they talk? A lot of my NSA days from just looking at networks. We yeah. also pick up on things like how much is the device being used, the utilization, which really sure. matters when we're talking about downtime and uptime. Definitely. The second bucket is integrations with other software that people have within their existing stack. So that can be IT integrations like in Aruba or a Cisco. It can also be OT integrations like that very specific Rockwell software that's keeping track of just that vendor versus the very specific Honeywell OEM software that's keeping track of all of those devices. We sure. bring all that together. And then we bring the third input stream we call the stakeholders that we make it really easy for them to log in and get the information that they need as well as bring in feedback to the platform for what they're seeing. And so that's the third input is security and OT stakeholders. And okay, it's an important sure. piece because security has un an understanding of the network. OT has a separate understanding of the devices in the physical world and bringing Definitely. those two together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you're doing a great job of touching on one of the key challenges. I mean, obviously, you know better than I do, but one of the key challenges that at least I've seen when it comes to IoT and OT mm. is exactly what you're saying, kind of getting those two teams to work together, yes. the OT team and the security team and say, okay, we want to make sure that these devices are secure. Most operations teams are probably going to agree with that, where it becomes maybe more of an issue is, okay, how are we going to go about doing that? Yeah. There's a past client that I worked with that they had a 100% uptime requirement for their manufacturing plans. Yeah. If that's the case, how are you ever going to patch one of these devices, right? So how have you tried to address that within yeah. these organizations and what would you do with like that very specific oh, example? This is wonderful. So um, what you should know before we get into that use case is okay. by bringing these three str streams of information together, we build a really rich understanding of the devices in that very specific context of sure. an organization's operations. And this is coming from my NSA days where I saw, um, as part of at the NSA, I was the co-lead for the AI ML portfolio at the Pentagon, which is a very fancy way of just saying that I was interfacing with startups and matching them with DOD projects. And this was oh, part cool. of the Defense Innovation Unit. We can we can get into it at this sure. point. I saw that so many security solutions struggle with garbage data, and that's why alerts are never as good as promised. That's why <laughs> even in the IoT and OT space, there's still a lot of struggles with sure. asset identification and what marketing one pagers says it is and what it actually is in reality. At Perigee, what we do is we bring together the network monitoring insights, things like the IP address, the MAC address, yep. protocols, ports, all the things that is that really rich data you get from the network side. But we also bring in that organizational specific context, the maintenance schedules, the cleaning schedules, who the owner of the device is, what building is it in. Hmm. And with that is what becomes this 
foundation for um, building security best practices, security Got controls, it. using the workflows, the dashboards, all the stakeholders that we're bringing and implementing together. So for your use case that you're describing, um, that has 100% uptime, <laughs> for, um, here's what I would be willing to bet. Sure. That they had devices on the shop floor, and then they had the security cameras in the garage, and the devices on the shop floor had 100% uptime. The security camera in the garage may not have 100% uptime requirements. Definitely. Because, they, because people have a mental model for how they prioritize devices. And yeah. Perigee is so good at, at matching people's mental models. So the first sure. thing that you would do is um, in building a workflow or a dashboard, you could parse out and say, I want to just look at the devices on my shop floor separate from my security cameras in the garage. Sure. Um, even if there are security cameras on the shop floor, you're going to look at them. You can look at them separately. Yeah. And then from there, um, you can build a workflow in Perigee that essentially would say, oh, you've got 100% uptime. So when this device is being cleaned, that is when I want to patch it. As one, sure. as one example, you could, you could have, um, it's got 100% uptime, but during this very specific window, let's say we're a seasonal business, and between June and, June and December is when we have 100% uptime requirements, but between January and June, we don't. Then we're going to patch devices you sure. know, in February. And you can, be, you can build that amount of customization and configure using the knowledge that we have and the tools that we make available to end users. I'm sure a lot of the security folks listening are losing their minds a little bit thinking that like, hey, we just won't patch for six months. But in the OT space, I mean, that's a better than the alternative of never, of, right? Of, and, and most <laughs> of the time, I would be willing to bet security could also be breathing a sigh of relief and finally hearing, wow, I don't have to keep saying, just cross my arms and say no all the time. Sure. Um, it's the domain knowledge, it's the, it's the responsibility that we have as security teams that we need to patch it. It's the domain knowledge that operational teams have for right. when that right time is. And finally, a platform that helps us work from the same set of resources to get to that outcome of being able to patch them in a way that doesn't disrupt the rest of the business. Right, right. And so to your point, right, it's this combination of, hey, I can prioritize these security cameras in terms yes. of resolving those issues because they have less impact on the actual operations of the business. And then for the ones that might actually actually be more sensitive, like those on the shop floor, yeah. okay, how can we pull in some of this contextual data from these fleet management systems yeah. to say, okay, here are these different schedules that allow us to more confidently patch in a way that's not going to impact operations. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. Um, as, as just one other example, I've, I've sat across from people who've, been, who've asked me, I have 147 patches, <laughs> where do I begin? And these sure. are exactly the kind of use cases that are so prime for a, for a platform like Perigee because maybe you want to start with the low-hanging fruit, maybe you want to start with the things that are most important. It's a conversation, but it is possible to start to distill from 147 patches to something that is is enabling the business to move forward. Yep, and we just talked about this exact problem with Lisa earlier oh, cool. when we were talking about vulnerability management, yeah. right? And part of what we were saying is, hey, the same problem exists across the entire ecosystem where there's just so much to go ahead and address once you start putting in these best practices tools that give you that visibility to all the issues that you have. Yeah. And then it's about, okay, how do we actually make this manageable? And that's why we see all these different contextualization platforms that are yeah. popping up today to address that problem that arose really from great technology to begin with that's identifying all these different issues. So, I mean, tell me a little bit more about the IoT ecosystem and, and how you've seen that evolving over the last few years. Because yeah. when I was back in school many years ago, I was doing yes. IoT research actually and kind cool. of understanding what some of the security ramifications were looking like for IoT moving forward. At that time, we were talk at that time we were talking about the just okay, what is it going to look like with all these connected devices? Like one of the big examples at the time was the casino in Las Vegas yes. that got hacked through the thermometer in the fish tank. Yes. Yeah, everyone loves hearing that story, it just kind of blows their mind, right? That's very different than the kind of like OT focus that we have today when we think about manufacturing sex. And so I think at this time, everyone was thinking, okay, IoT is going to pervade everything in our lives and this is going to be a security risk everywhere. Mm -hmm. It feels like to me in practice, it's more centered in manufacturing sites today. What are you really seeing here? Yeah. I, um, let's see. I agree with 
your where, where you started, which was the entire world is going to be connected. Yeah. Yes, that is that is true. We are moving in that direction. I think where you drew a conclusion around manufacturing, saying that we're only seeing it there. How I would articulate, or at least shape that or position it is yeah. that they're just the first ones to reach the frontier of their entire sure. shop floor being connected and then you're, you're starting to see healthcare be the next follower of, and as being one that is similarly entirely connected energy sector is next education and so it's not a matter of it's only sitting in manufacturing and healthcare it's just a matter of when do all the rest of these industries start to follow suit and, right. and catching on and seeing the value that happens when you bring in automation and IoT, sure. but also the, the security risks that they'll need to manage and sure. mitigate as a result of it. No, I think it's a great point. Again, part of what I was trying to get at is, hey, there was this idea that, okay, within two years, yeah. everything is going to have IoT. And to your point, there's kind of this prioritization of different industries yeah. that really need it more than others sooner rather than later, right? And so today, to your point, it is still largely manufactured. That's a lot of the focus. Yeah. How are you at Perigee preparing for some of those additional industries that are probably starting to see more adoption moving forward? Healthcare, for example, yep. huge regulatory requirements, yeah. slightly different than manufacturing in terms of yeah. like asset contextual awareness. Yeah. So what yeah. are you doing there? Absolutely, and you, you bring up an, an, another really good point around some of the other headwinds happening in this industry, which is regulation accelerating this, COVID is accelerating the adoption yeah. of IoT, everyone loves talking about that. <laughs> um, in terms of how Perigee is addressing this, we are focusing first on healthcare and manufacturing because that is where you see the highest urgency for a security solution for IoT and OT devices. Um, they've got a really high density of devices in these environments. Those devices are really critical in nature. If something goes down in a hospital, if, wa if water right. goes down in a hospital, they have to evacuate the entire hospital. And um, if the HVAC system goes down in a hospital, you risk the fact that um, if now, now it's not as well ventilated and with COVID, that was not a great outcome. So exactly, we are focusing on those first. And we have existing relationships, existing customers, existing pilots with folks in other industries. I'm sure. What we know is that those are a long, a longer play that is positioning sure. us to be a horizontal platform to serve an even bigger market. But the core focus and the places where we are making sure that we are best at is in the healthcare and manufacturing as they're Got leading it. the way for all the other use cases that will eventually impact these other industries. Right, right. So beyond this kind of horizontal expansion yeah. out to these other industries and these sectors, what does the really mission look like moving ahead for Perigee? What are some of your top priorities as you think about the next yeah. like 12 months? When I think about the mission for Perigee, it is to help organizations securely embrace IoT and OT devices sure. in the digital world. Um, what does securely embrace mean? It means that they are able to adopt new technologies and do it in a way that they have peace of mind, that they have workflows and processes so that they can actually and they have them do the thing that they want them to do within the business. Get the sure. full value of their investment in IoT. That, that is what I think of as the mission. What I am so excited for in Perigee's future and just in how this space plays out more broadly is um, how over time, I mean, we're already seeing that IoT and OT is making up the majority of a lot of assets within an organization. And if it's not, you know, sometimes you'll talk to a few organizations that say they have on an order of 30 to 300 devices and maybe 500 to 1,000 laptops, and we're going to start sure. to notice an inflection point where you will have more IoT devices than laptops. And so I'm really excited where the companies like Perigee, who are starting as a pure play IoT and OT solution, and really understanding purpose building for that, and then thinking about what does it look like when there are more IoT and OT devices in a network sure. than IT, and what opportunities that leads to for, for the IoT and OT players to be the bigger players for an IT. For, for the total cybersecurity space and, right. and how starting here positions you really well to be a leader in a cybersecurity industry overall long term. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, really appreciate your time. Yeah. appreciate you sharing some insights as far as just the overall IoT space. Again, I think it's something that a lot of security practitioners are kind of familiar with at a high level, yeah. probably myself included at this point, given how much it's evolved. But it's interesting to just hear the kind of behind the scenes of 
okay, what are some of those problems in practice? What are some of those use cases that customers are trying to solve and how Perigee is going about that? So I appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing you around the conference. Yep, you bet. All right. Thank you. Yep.